Hello, aspirant. Today I have brought world geography in this class. What I am trying to teach is that all the government exam oriented aspirants, you need to have basic logic to understand world geography. On the basis just on taking the example of temperature and rainfall, I am going to explain you the entire world geography. In beginning only, I am telling you that on the basis of temperature and rainfall, on equator, tropic, temperate, arctic and antarctic, the whole world geography can be studied. Let me take, give you an example. We all know that Earth is in sphere shape and there is a line passing in between at zero degree, what we call it as equator. Okay. Now please focus here. When I write this word that is called equator, equator has been derived from a word called equal. It can be also called a geographical equator because it is dividing the earth into two perfect hemisphere, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. It can also be called as thermal equator because this is the only line which have perfect 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Now when I write here 0 degree, so here I am writing that you know I am 23 degree and a half north of equator or I am 23 degree half south of equator which you know this is as tropic of cancer and this is as tropic of capricorn you know why we write zero degree at equator there are a lot of reasons in measurements but i tell you if suppose i am saying that i am at 23 degree half north of tropic of cancer it means i have lost the property of equator by 23 and a half degree it means i am less hotter by 23 and a half degree and as soon as i reach north pole and south pole i have totally lost the property of equator that is heat so as and when i come near to the equator i become much more hotter as i go away i become much more cooler now depending upon that please talk about what are the requirements of a rainfall you need to have a good amount of temperature i need to have a good amount of water now i will show you that this is the line which is passing in between that is called equator if you look at the equator here you know there are a lot of water bodies and as i told you this is a thermal equator so this is the line which is going to receive the maximum amount of the heat throughout the year so now let complete this graph on the world geography so you know what i am going to make this particular graph for the amount of temperature or sunlight and the next graph which i am going to make is for the rainfall okay now it will be much more easier for you to understand so i am telling you that equator is the line on the earth which receive the maximum amount of temperature so you know what i am going to give it a full marks on the amount of temperature received in comparison to any other place on the earth now as i told you these people are getting good amount of heat and there is a huge water body along the equator it means evaporation is but natural and here i am going to have huge amount of rainfall so i have given equator full marks in heat and corresponding evaporation and so is the rainfall if that is the condition first box what kind of forest will i find well i am going to find equatorial and mind the word which i am going to write here is equatorial evergreen forest so the forest which i am going to find is equatorial evergreen forest now what is evergreen the leaves will fall down but all the leaves will not fall down together it means whenever you go into this forest you find always there are going to be an evergreen leaves there are two basic properties of evergreen forest first see since there is a huge water the water level will be produced on the top layer it means if this is the root okay the root will not be deep inside the root will be shallow because the water level is present on the top of, of the soil itself but yes there is one competition since the basic ingredients or the basic attitude of the trunk is a like pipeline the objective of the trunk is to carry water as far as possible so what happens if there is so much of you know luxury given to the trees there is a competition in the height so you know what there will be a feature which is called canopy so what will happen if suppose this is a sun and this is a small tree 
So the another tree will try to increase its height, so it will grow in this format. Another tree will further increase its height, so what will happen, a multi-layering of trees will be grown and this attitude is called canopy. So there will be a very dense forest called canopy and the true trees will not be deep inside, the roots will not be deep inside plus the leaves will be also will be broader and have a darker bottle green color because they want to tap as much as sunlight is there for photosynthesis. So this is evergreen forest. Now take a logic, if the forest is so dense then what kind of animals will I find here? I cannot have huge animals here because there is no place to move. So animals which I will find here are basically reptiles, birds and our forefathers monkeys. Right? Now if I talk about the amount of rainfall, let's write it as I had mentioned in my last video of Indian geography that rainfall is going to be somewhere around 200 centimeter to 250 centimeter on the average on the quarter line. If this is the amount of rainfall which they have, it is but natural that these people are going to have a soil that is called a lateral soil. So I am not taking into the feature of the local consideration. We all know that any place which has 200 to 250 centimeter rainfall, they are bound to have the laterite soil. Now let's talk about what will the people do here. See, they have ample amount of forest, they have ample amount of animals, so they don't have to do actually anything. They can just go for food gathering. And another thing what they can do is they can go for hunting. Okay, so a kind of a tribal culture will be there of food gathering and hunting. And now the color of the skin of the people. See, the more I am nearer to the sun rays, the more I am nearer to the equator, I will have a darker complexion. So hence, the color of the skin will be black. Now seeing on the basis of rainfall and temperature, I have deduced this. Let's go to the second layer of the world geography, which I am talking about Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Now remember, in the tropical countries, we do not have the summer season throughout the year as in our country. Say we have a summer season for 4 to 5 months. Hence, I will not give full marks. I will be giving less than marks in comparison to the equator. So this is what a summer we get. If summer is less, it is directly proportional to the amount of evaporation and finally the rainfall. So the rainfall also will be lesser in comparison to the equator. Hence, if the summer is less, evaporation is less and rainfall is less, hence I will be getting a forest. So I am going to write here that I am going to get tropical deciduous forest. Now the terminology deciduous means the season which is called autumn season in which all the trees irrespective will shed their leaves. Why? Because they will not have ample amount of sunlight or water. So they have to shed their leaves. So that is why I have written a terminology called deciduous. Now you can ask me a question, sir, I have also heard about tropical evergreen forest. Yes, quite possible. If all the features of equator is present on tropics, you can have evergreen forest. But I am talking about majority, right? Now, two features of tropical deciduous forest. Since the basic feature of the trunk is to do for a water supply, here the roots will be bit deep inside because of the less rainfall, the water level is not present on the top layer of the soil, hence the root will be littered more deeper. And since the water supply is not huge, the trees will not have a long height. It will be quite shorter in height in comparison to equatorial evergreen forest. And hence, the forest are also will not be so dense, they will be having ample place in between. So here I can find few larger animals, for example in our country say lion, we can have tiger and in the outskirts in the third layer, we can also find elephants. Okay. I told you that since I am not having a great rainfall, so I can write the rainfall which we have here in the category of 100 centimeter to 200 centimeter of rainfall. Okay, barring the local topography, if I talk about the soil, I can have red and yellow soil. For example, take South India, black soil is there because of it is igneous in character. But if you take the other part, we have red and yellow soil. Why? Because if there is too much of rainfall in hydrated form, the red soil convert its color into yellow. Okay, what about 
the uh, you know, uh, things which happens here, what people do, well, the people here are basically doing agriculture and cattle rearing. Okay, many times when I ask what people do in India, they talk about corruption, but I am not interested there. Here we do agriculture and cattle rearing. Why? Because see, we have an autumn season in which there is no vegetation possible. So for that gross months, we need to store. So that is why we go on agriculture. And since we have a lot of herbivory animals, we go for cattle rearing. On the basis of this and the heat, decreasing of the heat, because I am talking about tropics and this Capricorn. So here, the skin color will be brown. Now let's go to the third part where I am talking that here I have almost, you know, equal amount of heat which I get at the tropics. But the problem is, since they do not have much of water body, the rainfall here is comparatively lesser than in the tropics. Well, I am talking about an area which we call as tropical or temperate grasslands. Now, see, it's very clear. Suppose I'm standing at the equator. I found there are huge tall trees, very dense. As I start moving towards tropics, I find the trees height are decreasing. The trunks are smaller. It is a bit spacious. As I move to the grassland, I find that totally the trunk is lost. Why? Because the basic feature of the trunk is to carry water. And since there is no water there in the sand or in the first layer, there is no need of the trunk. So the direct leaves are going deep inside the soil. So what we find, what kind of vegetation do we find here? See, we will be finding this grasses or we find trees which is very thin in the stem or the trunk is very thin and some leaves there. Okay. So there is a lot of open land for the animals to run and hunt. That is why this is called hunting zone and all the fastest running animals are found here. For example, you can ride leopard, we can ride cheetah, we can ride deer, and lot of cattle, herds of buffaloes and cows, so which are very good at running speed, right? And now one more animal can be found, one more animal, my attractive and masterpiece drawing will project this. I have made an animal that is called giraffe, okay? So don't get jealous with my accurate drawings, it's fine. So we also find here giraffe, right? If I talk about the rainfall, well, it's not so high. So the rainfall is in the category of 6, 10, 6 centimeter to 100 centimeter. If I talk about the soil, here I'm going to have an arid soil because the soil is a bit dry because of lesser rainfall. Now, what will the people doing here? I will be giving you the hint. Have you heard about pampas? Have you heard about prairies? So these are the huge grassland, which have a huge property like we have in Australia and New Zealand. People have huge amount of pastoral farming. So you find, like you see in Australia and all, these areas have huge cattle like cowboys and all. Okay, so you find there is a huge amount of milk production, meat production, you know, you have a textile industries, woolen textile. So all these, so these are the very rich areas, okay, pastoral farming. And what will the color of the skin of the people? Basically reddish because of the sunburn and huge heat there, okay. Now let's go to the next part of the world where I have almost equal kind of heat which I find in the grassland area but absolutely very less and little lesser water supply so I can say that they hardly have any rainfall rather scanty rainfall. Well you might have all understood I am talking about the area that is called desert. So we all know, you know, in a desert, as such, there is no vegetation or agriculture possible, but we have a thorny kind of a forest area. For example, you have seen cactus, right? So cactus have thorns like this. You know what? The thorns are the leaves and this pulpy part are the stems where there are a lot of water stored in it. Desert has a unique property. There is a sand. Sand get heated very fast in the daytime and the night time is cool faster. So if you go to the area beyond Jaisalmer or any part of the world, uh, you know, desert, you find the morning temperature or the afternoon temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. But in the evening or the night time, it will come to even as low as 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. So only those animals or vegetation that can survive the scarcity of the water as well as the variation and temperature can survive in desert. So I have a very few things to mention, like example, you might have known camels, 
and again back to reptiles which can sustain these kind of uh, temperature variations. If I talk about rainfall, we all know the rainfall is less than 60 centimeter. If I talk about soil, the soil which is found here is sandy soil. And what will the people do here? See, if you talk about the modern technology and irrig irrigational system, even Rajasthan is also having rice. But if I take all that away, the people here are involved in basically hunting, right? So that is why we have an example from Africa, the Maasai tribe, which live in the transition zone of grassland and desert, they basically do not kill their cattle, they cut the nerves of their cattle, drink the blood, and again fill the nerves to, to the cattle to rejuvenate it. So that is why they also depend upon hunting, right? If I talk about the color of the skin, well, I cannot comment here because it depends where is the desert. If it's in Africa, the color will be black. If it is there in India, it will be whitish. If it is again in somewhere in the Australia, it will be reddish. So depending upon the area away from the equator, the color will go into lighter shades. Well, now I'm talking about all of a different part of the world where I would like to mention it to be a cold desert. So I'm basically mentioning about the Arctic, Antarctic and the North and the South Pole where the problem is about the heat. They have good water body but the problem is that they absolutely do not have any heat to evaporate them. So that is why this area is totally frozen. Okay? In that kind what vegetation we have is coniferous forest. So you might have seen the you know, Christmas trees and all which have this kind of thorny like vegetation which do not allow the snow to settle down on it so that kind of forest we have right now if i talk about the animals we know the all the soft toys made around the world are biased toward this because we found that all soft toys polar bear penguins okay then walrus all you can see is found here snow leopard all are found here and if I talk about rainfall, there is no rainfall, rather there is snowfall or hailstorm, I can say. If I talk about soil, there is no soil, it's totally ice sheets which are covering there, okay. If I talk about what people do, we know the people who live there are called Eskimos, they live in igloos and they prefer going for aquatic hunting. So like for example, they are doing fishing or they are killing polar bears, so that's what they do. And if I talk about the color of the people, skin color, that is going to be white because they are totally away from the temperature of the uh, sun. So you know what I have done? Just on the basis of two things, that is called rainfall and temperature, I have generalized the world geography. Thank you so much for your time. We will be again uploading a new video.